Lord, no other name is a chain breaker. No other name is an attitude adjuster. No other name is a heart healer. No other name is a mind healer. No other name is a relationship restorer. No other name. So Lord, as you call on that name, Jesus, we pray and ask you to have your way throughout the rest of the service. We surrender ourselves, our minds, our hearts, our wills, our emotions, so that you can speak to us. You're a great God, a wonderful God. So anoint me to be a tool in your hand, the master craftsman. And I surrender as you increase, as I decrease. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Before you see it, turn to a neighbor and say, neighbor, no other name but Jesus. Find another name and say, neighbor, no other name but Jesus. You may be seated. I have some housekeeping to do. Um, but before I go into housekeeping, I want to bring somebody up and talk with a little bit uh, just about her past, present, future, what God is doing in her life and things like that. Uh, but before I go there, we're going to play uh, a clip and it will bring up the guest. telling you I will survive, but I never told you how. Yeah. It was a fun time. I will survive. Top the charts at number one. My fan base growing like wildfire. People were beginning to recognize me on the street, but that girl was lonely. Her husband was her manager. He called all the shots. I was so afraid of abandonment. I allowed myself to be controlled. Hang on, baby. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Smoking marijuana, doing cocaine. I felt a fist grab me in my chest and said, that's enough. And I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I realized that's what that was. That was God. 65 years old, divorced. Who am I now? I really want to inspire people with the faith that has brought me through all of the difficult times. I needed to find a manager that's willing to champion an artist that has never done gospel music before. Yeah. Woo. The things that she's been through. I woke up paralyzed from the waist down. I just knew they would become an instrumental part of this recording. I had really, really deep scars from abuse. And you grow up feeling un. Gloria Gaynor, she's kind of the poster child of people just getting through to point to what is her source of strength was just a cool idea. At first I was afraid. Don't do that. Yes, ma'am. If you can dream it, you can accomplish it. To be honored like this, it inspires me to keep going with this project. So how old were you when you finally started college? 65. Age is just a number. All of those struggles make us stronger and help us to get to where we want to be, help us to do what we want to do, help us to create what we want to create, and survive and thrive.
Wow. Wow. <laughs> right? Every day. Yes. All day, every day. Uh, for, first of all, this is an honor for me uh, because you never think you're going to meet certain individuals. Hmm. And, you know, uh, my BC days hanging out and um, handing out tracks at certain locations and establishments. <laughs> Hearing that song, like the, the, the club actually turned up, and I'm, se I, I'm, I'm a 77 uh, baby. I was born in 77. And that song came out when? 78. In 78, right? But I'm not going to um, uh, hand out tracks until I was in uh, the 90s when I was in my you know, late teens, you know, 20s, and um, preaching about God. <laughs> that song still was turned up. And then I look at my kids, my 23-year-old, my 20-year-old, and I play that song in the car, in the house, and... It, I'm like, they act like they were there mm. <laughs> when the song was first released. And um, what a legacy. Thank you. What a legacy. Thank you. Now, I know I'm, I'm interviewing uh, Gloria Gaynor uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you just saw the, the trailer for a docu-series or documentary that's coming out. Please tell us about it. February 13th, which is Tuesday, for one day only, Galentine's Day. Get your girls together. I'm expecting a lot from you, CCC. Get, yourself, get your girls together and go and celebrate sisterhood. And, and, and just absorb what the Lord has for you because I really believe that the Lord has called me to do this, to share with you and the rest of the world, um, his blessings upon me, and that those blessings are available for everyone. Amen. Everyone. Amen. So, it, it, I, I, the reason why I refer to that song is because I believe that God blesses individuals with the song, mm. right? And that, that really creates an indelible mark on society. All right, you know, I refer to Michael Jackson, that song, uh, Man in the Mirror. Mm. I'm gonna make a change. <laughs> Shame on me for once in I my like life. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take vocal, thank you. I'm gonna take some vocal lessons in one day. I'm gonna come and turn up up in here oh, on the God. stage. <laughs> and I'm gonna be like, I will, will. Oh, woo, woo, yeah. <laughs> but when I listen to I Will Survive, um, that is another song that I believe was one of those songs that um, God used you to birth into society. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about the behind the scenes. Can we talk about it? I don't know what you want to talk about okay. to leave it for the when video. I, when I had, 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 had surgery on my spine, and uh, afterwards, uh, the record company said that they were not going to renew my contract, and I thought it was over. And I began to pray and, and ask the Lord to do something. I didn't know what he was going to do, but I knew he was going to do something. And eventually, the record company, who had said they were not going to renew my contract, got a new president over from England, and he liked me. So he sent me out to California to record a song called Substitute. <laughs> Hated it. <laughs> but I wanted my career to continue, so I went to do it. And when I got there, I asked them what would be the B-side. Some of us know what the B-side is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they okay. said, well, we don't know. For, for those who don't know what the B-side is, you, a tracks. you had... No, it wasn't a track. Do you know? It was a vinyl. A vinyl? Vinyl, My tape, 45. My tape had A-side, B-side. No, no, no. Like, this that tape deck. When you had your tape and you had to use the, the pen to rewind. Oh, my God. You are an 80s child. Okay, so a, a, a record. Yes, a record, a record, a disc. A vinyl. A vinyl disc. A vinyl disc. A vinyl disc that had 45... I know, a CD disc. 45 times it ran around the recording 
thing 45 times per minute. That was so we like all now know what RPM. the B side anyway. is. The other side of the vinyl disc. Anyway. <laughs> I asked them what would be the B side and they said, we don't know. What kind of songs do you like? I said, I like songs that are meaningful, thoughtful, touch people's hearts, have good melodies. They said, we think you're the one we've been waiting for to record this song we wrote two years ago. Mm. And they brought out the lyrics to I Will Survive. And I thought, what are you, stupid? <laughs> you're going to put this on the B side? This is a timeless lyric. Yes. I'm relating to this, the fact that I'm in a spine, in a, in a back brace because of spine surgery. I'm relating to this, the fact that my mother just passed away a couple of years ago. Everybody's going to relate to this, anything that they're going through that they think is insurmountable and yet hope they'll survive. Mm -hmm. They said, well, you know, that's, that's, that's the deal we made with the record company. I said, well, if it's left to me, that won't, ha that won't stay like that. So we took it back to the record company, wouldn't even listen to it. Mm. I said, that's okay. We got the discs. We took them to Studio 54. Okay. Right number Studio 54. <laughs> Had the DJ play it there. Y'all, you went to, that's your BC life, right? BC. Right? Absolutely BC. <laughs> so we played it, the, he played it, and the audience swarmed the dance floor. And I thought, okay, this is, I'm right. If this is a, if the, you get a jaded New York audience to respond like that. The first time they hear a song, that's a hit song. <laughs> so we gave them all 45 of this, uh, 25 of the disc. He gave them to his friends around New York. They began to play it in their clubs. People began to request it. And then they began to request it on radio because now they want to hear it in traffic on the way to work, on the way home, mm -hmm. all of this. And um, the rest is history. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a timeless. So you, 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 what was the um, genesis for this production? Well, I had gone through a lot of difficult times in my life, and I wanted to record an album. And as I record, began to gather the people that I needed. My producer, my, my, my manager, Stephanie Gold, found this producer who was a disco fanatic, so he was very happy to work with me. And then he came up with the idea of getting other people to do it, and I saw the price mounting and all of that, and I asked the Lord about it, really prayed about it. He told me to continue with the project, and then he also led me to believe that other people could benefit by hearing my story. Mm. Not only the story of the recording of the album, but the story of different parts of my life. Yes. To help people understand that whatever it is you're going through in your life, these difficulties, these hard times, don't need to define you. Mm, amen. They can help you to grow and gather strength for the next step as you move up through life. And they can help you to become the best version that God meant for you to be of yourself. Amen. Amen. So, uh, preparing individuals to go see this, what is the major takeaway? If, if, because you, there's a lot in that, you know, talking about the divorce and we've had conversations. I was, mm. I remember back in, you know, was it was it MTV mm. uh, that they had your story on yeah. with your sister because of how it, it intertwined yeah. and with that issue, is that going to be a part of the conversation? That's in there a little bit. Um, but like you said, the major takeaway is what I just said, that you don't have to let these things, this is not who you are. This is, these are the difficult, these are the things in life that help you to become a better person, help you to grow, uh, move you from one step to another. You know why? Because, we, you know, I asked, well, why does, why, why does this have to happen to me? Why do I have to go through this? Because who you are, how you are. I don't <laughs> want you to go through this, but you won't move until I set a fire under you. Mm. You won't move. You don't want to go from one place. You get comfortable in one place and you want to stay there. And I have to cattle prod you to get you to go to the next step. So I don't cause these things to happen to you. But because these are the elements that are around you and you refuse to follow me. You preaching these good. These things happen. Yeah, you preaching these things good. Happen to like, you. Can you say that again for those who are listening? Because some people are, are quick to point to God and say, well, why, why are you allowing this? Or why did you do this? And, and, and whatnot. Can you repeat that, please? That's you profound. You allow these things to happen to you. Because you won't follow me. You sit down, and every now and then you think, oh, I need to turn to God. I need to ask him a question. I need to find out where he wants me to go. And you sit down for two seconds and you say that, and then you jump up and you run away. Mm. And get on with the rest of your life, the busyness in your life. 
You haven't waited for an answer. Mm-hmm. Wow. And even if he tried to answer, you didn't hear him because you immediately filled your life up with a whole bunch of other busyness and craziness. Mm. <laughs> you need to listen. Oh. He's chasing after you, but you still can't hear him because you've got too much noise in your life. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Gloria, thank you so thank you. much for, for even the, the love uh, that you have for my parents. And for uh, you. And I know, and, and for me. <laughs> I knew him when he was like, I know, she's seen me grow up. <laughs> my, my son, my, seven, uh, my 11 year old, he said, Daddy, who's that? I said, that's Gloria Gaynor. How dare you ask who that is, right? <laughs> and he said, who's Gloria Gaynor? I said. Did you sing the song? Yes, I did. I was like this. I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> Thank you so Thank you. much for all you contributed to society and everything. Oh. Thank you so much. Yeah. Come on, let's give it up for Gloria Gaynor. Uh, we're uh, Gloria, where can they see where? Where is it going to be playing? The most important part. Yes. December 13th, this coming Tuesday, one, I mean, I'm sorry, February 17th, one night only. Oh, February okay. 13th. February 13th, one night only. Okay. Go to GloriaGainer.com and it will tell you the theater that is playing here near you. Gainer.com? GloriaGainer.com. GloriaGainer.com. Gloria GloriaGainer.com. Write that down because some of y'all are going to think your minds are so young and you're going to forget. GloriaGainer.com. Embrace your age, some people. So, somebody in here needs to hear that. Embrace your age. I have. I have. And uh, I'll tell you how I have. So, and I, and I just want to say thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, this week was a week that I know. I felt the prayers of CCC. Uh, and, and, and when some people randomly just hit me up in uh, social media or text messages saying, I'm praying for you. And I, I know because this week was a very difficult week for uh, my family. Uh, I get home last Sunday after service. You know, we shout and I was ready to run across the stage. I'm excited. And camera goes, oh, daddy, do you know I got, I got walking pneumonia? I said, walking pneumonia? I said, how'd you get that? Where'd you get that from? And she started sounding like a... <laughs> I said, ooh, girl, go get your life. Uh, quarantine, quarantine. And so then Monday morning, I wake up, you know, I go to the gym, I uh, come home, and my wife's like, I got to go to the hospital. So she ended up having to take my other daughter to the hospital because she has something going on in her... Um, female parts. I don't know. I don't know the name of it. It's called. My, my mother sheltered us so much from this stuff that if, if, if a maxi pack commercial came on while we were in the room, she would change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife is in the hospital giving me updates. You know, they thought a, a cyst ruptured, you know, uh, and uh, my, my kids are probably going to get mad because I put them, I'm t telling their business, but um, um, my dad set the tone. He does that to me, so I got somebody to do it too. <laughs> and I'm at home. All of a sudden, I get this pounding headache. My whole body starts hurting, my joints. Uh, I'm like, oh, man, I, I pray I didn't get COVID. So I did the home, little home, cheap home test, and when I came back negative. I, did the, I, I checked my temperature. I was at 102.3. I said, all right, let me go to urgent care. I went to urgent care. They tested me for COVID. Uh, influenza A, B, they just said, everything's negative. We don't know what it is. I said, wait, what do you mean you don't know what it is? They said, well, the way you're feeling, you might have to get the blood work done, and we don't do blood work. You know, go to the emergency room. I said, I'm not going to the emergency room. So I went home, Tylenol. They tried to give me some Tamiflu. Tamiflu is the worst thing. It hurt my stomach. For some people, I'm not you know, saying don't use it, but it just hurt. It just hurt. But Tuesday morning, I wake up, I felt great. Out of nowhere, right? I know, thank God. You know, so I go about my day. Wednesday, I go to the doctor. He said, well, maybe they tested too early, so he tested me again for COVID, for influenza A, B. I got, came back negative and stuff like that. Friday morning, I wake up, I'm in pain again. 
sinus infection, uh, sinus pressure, headache. Uh, so I'm just chilling, relaxing. My son Liam comes home from school, 103 temperature. I take him to the doctors, he has the flu. So I'm like, okay, Lord, what is going on? And I just want to say thank you, because this is some of the life of Pastor Jamal during the week, and your prayers are appreciated. Your prayers are needed. So I just want to give you that. I don't, I don't want your pity. I want your prayers. All right, saints? And don't worry, I got the, some people hitting me up to about uh, get your edelberry, uh, get vitamin C, get your zinc, get your, you know, get your sea moss. You, know, you got to get the uh, original sea moss. Don't get that processed sea moss. You know, get your beetroot. You know, make sure you get it at the proper spot and stuff like that. You know, uh, you know, take a sip of some sour sop and, you know, so don't worry, you know, uh, then, you know, some people say, you know, you, you got you to gotta get that rain nephews and, and rub it on your chest, right? right? See? I'm, I'm not going to tell you what else they tell me to do with the rain nephew, but they said rub it on your chest, take a cap full. <laughs> but thank you. Oh, man, time is running out. Uh, family Lent experience is coming up. I'm so excited about that. We are, yes. Some people say, why do you continue doing the Lent experiences? I believe that CCC as a whole comes out of the Lent experience with a deeper relationship and deeper connection with God, right? Because you, you see how things happen. And you should watch it, monitor it. Watch the ebb and flows. You look at how we just start, we took off. September came and, and just the, the worship experience went just exponentially to another level. The hunger that you're coming to the building and saying, no, I'm expecting a, an, an encounter with God. I'm expecting uh, a, a worship experience that's going to take me to the next level. And so I love that. So we are sticking with this whole Lent idea. Uh, if you want more information, go to cccinfo.org forward slash Lent. Uh, we, we have, we, we, I got the ministers together this time, and we sat down and we wrote a 40-day devotional. You got, uh, yeah, it's a collaborative effort, uh, Minister Misha, uh, Minister Melissa, Pastor Adam, Dario, Minister Dario, Minister Paul Schneeker. If I forget anybody else, please don't crucify me. Uh, myself and Dr. Mara wrote, wrote the forward, and we, 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 we said, you know, let's create an, a Lent experience, but also uh, all the proceeds are going to go towards our mission trips. You know, I got tired of, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to become that church that always asks and say, okay, give to the mission trip, give to the mission trip. I'd rather say, okay, give to the mission trip, but we're going to give you something back. Something that's not going to just uh, you know, make you feel good, but it's going to empower you to walk your walk with God. 40-day devotional, and uh, the, the, the title of the devotional is Courageous Sacrifice, a Lent devotional. Uh, it's, uh, the book is uh, on sale in the bookstore uh, after service today. Pick up your copy. Um, just, uh, and if you are of that affluent level uh, and you're able to buy multiple and help those who can't afford to buy one, Please do so. We're trying to make this a corporate experience. Uh, amen? Yes. Amen. I, I want to give this out to somebody. Look, she wrote, raised her hand. She raised her hand. You know? But, but the balcony always gets on me for not giving the book to somebody in the balcony. So I'm looking uh, in the balcony. Oh, look at my sister. She waving like you just don't care. <laughs> All right. Is that, is that, uh, I, I don't want to, is that leopard print? Yeah. Yeah, she light skinned it too, right there. Yeah, like she said, yes. Can you get that to my sister up there? Come on down. Amen. Amen. Um, all right, let's get into the the the, uh, the message today. Doctor Noir says his greetings. He's up in Detroit. Uh, yeah, Detroit. He'll be back uh, next week. Um, I'm excited. Uh, to be here today. I'm excited to minister. I'm not going to be before you long. I, I believe that God is, is, is giving us a, a, <laughs> all right, this, we, we're going to, 
We're going we're gonna to get this together. What's our theme today, uh, uh, this year at CCC? Courage. Come on, what's our theme, CCC? Courage. Amen, amen. And Dr. Bernard has been talking about uh, the necessity, necessity of courage to seize opportunity. So I'm excited to talk about today, and I love, because uh, even with the, the song that, that um, they were singing, you look at the fact that how fear has, is one of the biggest issues that we all deal with. Right? You don't do something because you were afraid to. You don't do something because you're afraid to. They said even public speakers that should be speaking aren't quick to speak because they're afraid to speak. One of the biggest fears of individuals. But today I'm here to tell you that we need to embrace change. And we have to have the courage to embrace change. You know why? Let me tell you why. We need the courage to embrace change. Because when change is necessary... Not to change becomes destructive. You've been taught that, but these are certain uh, statements that are, are, are bear weight and, and a necessity for us to repeat it. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. No, you got to say it like that. Say, neighbor. neighbor. When, change when change is necessary, not to change becomes destructive. So just to reiterate some of the stuff that Dr. R has been talking about, seizing opportunity involves facing fears. Embracing change, overcoming self-doubt, and dealing with the risk of failure. All which require a significant amount of bravery and courage. See, seizing opportunities often requires courage due to several reasons. And Dr. Noir has a list. I'm only going to go over one, which is change. I'll repeat this again. Seizing opportunities often requires courage due to several reasons. And number one is change. Somebody say change. change. See, because change and uncertainty is a part of seizing opportunity. Seizing opportunity typically brings in change. And with change comes uncertainty. It takes courage to embrace uncertainty and move forward to the, despite not knowing exactly what lies ahead. But we're not just talking about change, we're talking about good change. Somebody say good change. Good change. See, we're not talking about that change that if we, if we make a change, it'll end up destroying us, but that change that will ultimately elevate us. See, we live life on levels and we arrive at stages and at each level there's, an, an, a, 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 there's a change needed, a deepening of our maturity, a deepening of our character. See, change is inevitable. Change is inevitable. See, but fear and discomfort can rob us of that change. Embracing change requires, once again, courage, strength, and a willingness to step into the unknown. See, so today we're going to explore the profound courage it takes to embrace change and how it can lead us to growth, resilience, and a deeper sense of purpose. See, growing up, my dad, a.k.a. Dr. Renard, inculcated the idea of having the courage to embrace change. See, this was important because, once again, when change is necessary, not to change becomes destructive. Once again, when change is necessary, not to change becomes destructive. He, he taught us things like change is the only constant in life. He taught us things like change is a process, not an event. Change is the essence of maturation. You won't grow unless you're willing to change. You won't change until you know what you're doing is wrong. Change comes either willingly or forcefully by crisis. And all change begins with the decision. And these are the things that we have been brought up with. We've been taught over the years the need for change and understand that change is the only constant in life. And, and you know, <clears throat> I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> See, because the reality is for some of us, 
We fight change because of laziness. <laughs> For some of us, we fight change because of laziness. Man, that's just too much work. It's easier to remain how I am. And that's why I love what uh, Gloria Gaynor was saying because she was tapping into my message and you, people get mad at, 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 at you know, where they are and they want to point to God instead of just pointing to themselves. And you are where you are because you're just lazy. You see, and laziness allows uh, an atmosphere to be created for you to deal with the same thing over and over again. Laziness creates an atmosphere where it allows you to put yourself into a place where you become so numb that even hearing the voice of God becomes difficult. For others, it is due to stubbornness. We don't change. I'm set in my ways and I am comfortable. I am who I am, and I'm not changing for no one. I'm not talking about anybody here in this building or watching on t or online. But there are individuals that are so stubborn, they, they do not want to change. And those stubborn individuals are the individuals that tend to be the most negative. Those are the individuals that are so stubborn that they don't change, but are so upset where they are that they tend to be the most negative ones. But for most of us, we fight change because of fear. And the biggest thing we fear is the unknown. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't be scared. I look at, I look at um, some individuals as they get older, the less inclined they are to embrace change. You know, so much so that they came out with this statement, you can't teach an old dog new tricks because of how you can tell that they don't want to change, but not here in CCC. We embrace change, amen? amen. Let's go to Numbers chapter 13. Verse 27, so, so we we're back, we, we, we're here, Moses is with Israel, they're hanging out, I'm a Jamal, this is Jamalism, and then we're going to get to 20, verse 27 is where we're going to land, but I've got to build up the story, so Joseph, Moses is hanging out, right, and God is talking to him, him and God, they talk a lot, so, hey God, how you doing, I'm doing good, how's everything going with you, we're doing good, you know. I don't know how you talk to God, some of y'all get super, super spiritual, but you know, like me and God got a base, you know. We started a baseline conversation. Lord, you, how's everything going? Man? Lord, let me ask you a question. Like, these are, these are how my conversations. Some of y'all, you know, y'all might be super deep and y'all try to, you know, uh, uh, um, impress God with these, these big, major theological terms. And um, I'm not worried about that. So I picture in myself as Moses, you know, because you look at Moses' history, he does have a, he had a good education. He was educated. Uh, he was raised in, in eloquence and stuff like that. But when it comes down to it, sometimes the simplest conversations are the best conversations. So Moses is talking to God, and God said, look, this is the land. We, 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 we were close. We're, 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 we're right there. I want you to send 12 individuals to go check out the land. You know, I want, you, I want them to go check out the land, bring back some fruit, you know, you know uh, just, just a, 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 a report on how things are going and stuff like that. So these 12 individuals, they go out there. You know, they go into the land and, they, and they're checking it out. 
And it's not a small land, so it, it doesn't take, it's not a quick trip. It's a, it's a couple of weeks, a couple of months. These guys are out there, they're observing, take a report, looking, saying, hmm, interesting. Mmm, right? And, and, and they, they get some details. Oh, that looks good. Oh, ooh, gotta watch out for that one. You know? And, and, they, and they're going through it. And then here it goes. At verse 27, they came back. They had a report. The meeting got with, 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 with Moses. And he says, And they told him, We came to the land in which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong. See, whenever you start something with however, when you're having a conversation with God and you're saying, God, I need this, God, I need that. But however, see, what you're doing is starting to try to create a situation where you are still able to maintain your comfort. You're, you're, you're trying to sit there and, and, and create a, a parameter on how you want this, this, this request to work. You're, you're creating this guideline. So God, this is the guideline. But however, if it can be done like this. So, so what, what they're saying is, however, so there's a fear here that has been presented. And what happens is whenever there's a however in your conversation with God, you're starting to see fear creeping up. They said, however, they give a good report. Like, look, this land is, is rich with resources. Milk and honey. Great land. But however, the people who dwell in the land are strong. And the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Najib and the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the hill country, and the Canaanites dwell in the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb replied, everybody needs a Caleb in their life. Yeah. Caleb replied, see, you got individuals that you're going to need in your life that are going to say, no, let's look at it from this perspective. Yeah, change can look scary, but let's look at it from this perspective. Caleb, uh, 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 but Caleb quieted quiet the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it. See, we've been talking about occupying. For we are well able to overcome it. We are well over. Uh, are able to uh, overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone to spy is a land that devours its inhabitants. And the reason why I paused there because you see how the things changed? You see how quickly it went so negative? The first report says, hey, it's a land of milk and honey. That land is prosperous. It's, 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 it's an amazing thing. But then when they get to the next level, start talking to people like, mm, child, let me tell you about this land. It devours its inhabitants. There's some issues, some things going on. And this, this is how we start psyching ourselves out when it comes to a challenge for you to change, especially when you know that you know that you know that God is asking for this next level of you. This deeper relationship with you and him. When God is asking for you just to change who you are. Because who you are right now cannot handle the blessing that I want to bless you with. So you change, they change up their story, and we often change out this, our story like, oh, I can do it. 
And next thing you know, man, nah, this is crazy. Look at those people. Look at it. You start adding some, some, some things to the conversation that wasn't part of the conversation just to talk you out of what, where you could have been going. It says, and the people and all the people that we saw in it are of great height. You see the change again? At first, he says, we saw some individuals, of uh, descendants of Anakin. And then we saw the Amorites, and we saw the Jebusites, and we saw all these other individuals. Now they change their story. Look at the story. He says, all the individuals are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the Nephilim. And we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seem to them. You see the change in the conversation? They go from we see some giants to now we see all giants. And what we do for ourselves, we start looking at some of the big issues and we got some of the small issues and then we start convincing ourselves that all of the issues are big. And because all the issues are big, this is why I can't change. Because all the issues are big, this is why I don't want to change. Because all the issues, you go from saying some issues because the reality is there are some issues that are big. And our journey for change. So you start seeing all the issues. And no matter what, God did not say spider land because that will determine if you're going to enter it. He just told him to spider land. And my belief is, as a strategist, I'm spying the land not because this is going to determine if I enter or not. It's just going to determine how I enter. Yeah. See, too often you think that these conversations are about you saying, okay, am I going to change or not? And the conversation should just be about how are you going to change? Not if you're going to change. How are you going to change? See, a part of embracing change and building the courage to change, first thing we got to do is, number one, acknowledge the fear. With all major change, there is a sense of fear. So we have to acknowledge it. See, courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to move forward in spite of it. Embracing change requires us to acknowledge our fear, doubts, and anxieties. We got to acknowledge them. By recognizing the challenges, change can bring. We begin to understand the depth of courage needed to confront them. I'll repeat that again. By recognizing the challenges change can bring, we begin to understand the depth of courage needed to confront them. So number one, acknowledge fear. Number two, trust in the unknown. And this is a big ask. It's a big ask. See, because change often leads us into uncharted territory. Where the familiar is left behind and the future is uncertain. It takes a great courage to trust in the unknown, to believe in new opportunities and blessings await us in the other side of change. See, embracing change means having faith in the journey even when the path ahead is unclear. And that's why I, I, I was tell, uh, talking to um, uh, my, my, my pops uh, last week, and I was telling him, I said, you know, you start out talking about that uh, uh, courage is a theme for the year, and a part of that is we, have, we need the courage to, to, to admit the need for God. 
and for others. I said, but Daddy, I went a little further back. See, I, I run down these rabbit holes, and, and the reality is that we need the courage just to believe in God. And some people are saying, well, well Pastor Mar, why do we need courage to believe in God? Because there are, we don't have 100% evidence and in, uh, in, 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 in our capacity to understand who this God is. So there is a, 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 a sense of the unknown of this God we serve. We don't know him to his fullness. There's a sense of this God who is uh, the, the breathed life out of nothing. There's a sense of God that we have a limited amount of knowledge. So there's a bunch of unknown about God. So therefore, it takes courage to believe in God. See, but, but, but the thing about courage, and I was talking to her, I said, courage to me is like faith. It's not illogical. Courage is not unreasonable. See, there's something about courage that has this, it's pinning on some type of evidence of what has happened in the past. And what I love about the, the belief in this God is that the fact that God will come and make up the difference. So the courage is not just in Jamar Bernard, but the courage is in the God I serve because I know that the God I serve is going to make up the difference. So when I step into the unknown, I'm not stepping into the unknown alone. When I'm stepping into an environment that is outside of my comfort zone, I know that I have been equipped and called for a particular job, a particular task, and my change and who I am as an individual is just to equip me to become better at the job and task I've been called to do. See, we can't be satisfied with where we are today because it'll be difficult for us to Embrace the better us tomorrow. I'll say that again. We can't be satisfied and comfortable with who we are today because we, it'll be difficult for us to embrace the better us tomorrow. I'll say that one more time for those in the balcony. Maybe you didn't hear me that we can't be comfortable and satisfied with who we are today because it'll become difficult for us to embrace who we can, the better us tomorrow. So number one, we have to acknowledge the fear. Number two, we have to trust in the unknown. Number three, we have to embrace vulnerability. Turn to anybody, say neighbor. neighbor. Courageous change. Requires vulnerability. requires vulnerability. See, it means being open to transformation. Allowing ourselves to be reshaped by the forces of change. Embracing vulnerability allows us to grow emotionally, spiritually, and mentally as we face the challenges and blessings that change brings into our lives. See, so as, 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 as we, 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 we embrace the vulnerability, because remember, God is not committed to the one you pretend to be. And I'll, I'll, I'll say that again. God is not committed to the one you pretend to be. God's commitment is to who you can be. Who you, all, all you have to do just make some adjustments. He's not telling you to lose yourself. He's not telling you to, 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 to just forget all that made you who you are. He's telling you to just adjust your perception. Adjust your, 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 your relationship with some of the hurt. Adjust your relationship with some of the pain. Adjust your relationship with some new information. Just some adjustments and you can become a better you. See, God is, a, God is a God who's into showing off. And my job for me is to make sure I become the individual that he is willing to show off. See, thank God for the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
I can be shown off like Job, but I don't have to go through what Job went through. So God can say, have you seen Jamar Bernard? And I know that I'm standing in a new covenant because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ where I'm really untouchable. All right. So number one, acknowledge this fear, this fear. We're all going to deal with it. You know, there's such a bad connotation to fear. But we, God designed us to have fear. Because fear becomes that checkpoint to catch you from doing something stupid. Remember I told you, there's a thin line between being courageous and being stupid. I got it, I got it. So fear is that checkpoint. Say, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> got my heart racing. Got me clenched up. Got a little nervous. It's okay. But fear is not a place to live. All right. All right. Acknowledge fear. Thank you. Trust in the unknown. Embrace vulnerability. Number four. Cultivating resilience. Cultivating resilience. And what do I mean by that? Change can test our endurance. See, change can become a magnifier. It magnifies the good aspects of who you are and also the bad aspects of who you are. Change can test our endurance. It can test our resilience. Change can test our adaptability. See, embracing change calls for resilience in the face of adversity. And Dr. Mar is talking, talk, has been talking about that and seizing opportunity. We have to be prepared for adversity. So embracing change calls for resilience in the face of adversity, flexibility in the midst of uncertainty, and the strength to overcome obstacles. See, it takes courage to bounce back. It takes courage to bounce back. It takes courage to bounce back. It takes courage to learn from challenges. And it takes courage to emerge stronger and wiser. Amen. And number five, as you embrace change, Embrace change as a journey. Embrace change as a journey. Ultimately, embracing change is a journey. A journey of self-discovery, growth, and transformation. A journey of self-discovery, growth, and transformation. It requires the courage to let go and let God. It requires the courage to let go and let God. It requires the courage to let go and let God. Because too often we try to let go and say, oh, no, God, let me get that back. Let me get that back. Gotcha. You come to the altar and you, you cry it out and you say, and, and then you're supposed to leave it. And you're like, nope, I'm bringing it back with me. Because I freed you from that. I know, I know, but it felt comfortable. I took that burden off your shoulder, I know, but it feels weird without that burden. I... I freed you from the bondage of chain, I know, but I just, I just can't, I don't, I don't know how to live life without that. I put you into a place where you can stand tall and strong. Yeah, but I know it just feels awkward walking like that. So as you embrace the journey of change, it requires the courage to let go and let God.
It also requires the courage to let go of the past in order to embrace the future. As you embrace the go of the past and embrace the future, you can step boldly into a new mindset. See, through this courageous embrace of change, we find a new beginnings, renewed purpose, and an opportunity to create a life that reflects our trust, trust in God. Amen. So number one, acknowledge that there's fear. Number two, trust in the unknown. And like I said before, Forrest Gump, you said it before, it happens. You said, what, Forrest? He said, it. <laughs> so in the unknown, it's going to happen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. In, the unknown, in the unknown, it's going to happen. Gonna Number three, embrace vulnerability. Number four, Cultivate resilience. And number five, embrace change as a journey. So as I close, we have to understand that embracing change takes extraordinary courage. The courage to acknowledge fear, trust in the unknown, embracing vulnerability, cultivating resilience, and see change as a transformative journey. As we venture forward into the winds of change, May we find strength and courage within ourselves to embrace the opportunities of, and challenges and blessings that change brings. And as I close, I want to just reflect. Looking at Black History Month and the certain realities that if it wasn't for somebody having the courage I can't, it's not loaded. The courage to change. Would we have been able to meet today in this building? When I think of Black History Month, I think of the individuals that were willing to take a chance to risk their lives because they knew that there's a future group of individuals that's going to benefit from the change of their life today. I think of Black History Month, I think about the individuals who are willing to go for, for go a lifestyle because there's a future generation that will benefit from the desire of change. And so I'm saying today to you, what is a future generation going to benefit for your desire to make some changes in your life today? The next generation is a decision away from prosperity or catastrophe. The next generation is a step away and all it takes is a decision to make a change in your life to become the better you than you were last year. So as I close, allow this statement to resonate with you. When change is necessary, not to change becomes destructive. Amen. Destructive for you, possibly the individuals around you, and the generation following you. When change is necessary, not to change becomes destructive. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. It takes courage to change. When change becomes necessary, not to change, becomes destructive. 
If you have not accepted Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior, today is a great day for you to embrace him by taking courage to change. If you have stepped away from the Lord, the way he has instructed you to live and to go, to go another way, it takes courage to change. Today, I extend to you the invitation to come to Jesus. Take courage to say, Lord, I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. And if I'm talking to you, I want you to come and say, you know what? Would you pray with me as I take courage to make the step to change? If you walked away from God, from his plan, his purpose from your life, I want to pray for you today. So I'm going to ask you to come now to the altar. Come home. Make a decision. Take courage to change. And if you're online, Recognizing that today I need to embrace change. And the only way I can do it is by accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Glory to your name, Jesus. As they are coming, we want to pray that God would move in a special way in their life, in their home, because we don't know what you're going through, but God does. Glory to your name, Jesus. It takes courage to change and as the song is said you're going to refuse to go back because God is giving you courage to embrace change family just stand with me and let's pray for them those of you online, we are welcoming you to the family. Welcome you home. This is a step forward. Those of you at the altar and family, just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, today I take a step forward. I thank you for giving me the courage to change. I embrace your plans, your provision for my life. From this day forward, I call you Lord and Savior of my life. I receive your plan, your provision for my life. And now I am yours, my soul, my heart, my spirit in my body in Jesus name Amen Welcome to the family of God Now 
you didn't join this ministry, you did something greater. You became members of the body of Christ. We invite you to get into a ministry that's teaching the word of God, that's embracing your plan to live for the Lord. We have some information on the screen, some numbers, where those of you online can text, call, and we will get material into your hands to walk with you, follow you on your spiritual journey. You are not alone from this day forward. You are moving forward. Welcome to the family of God. God bless you. You may return to your seats. Thank you, Alda. Can you pray for the congregation, please? Glory to your name, Jesus. Father, we glorify your name today. We thank you for giving us the courage in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of disappointment. You've given us the courage to stand strong and to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Amen. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, your kindness. And through it all, we are learning to lean not to our own understanding, but we are learning to lean on you, continuing to move forward. Thank you for this. Bless us, cause us to continue to be blessings in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Real quick, uh, part of the experience we're going to be doing, by, uh, we're gonna, we set it up not as a Tuesday night service, but a Tuesday night Bible study. So it's going to be a little different. We're going to try to keep it intimate. When I talk about intimate, we're not going to have a whole choir band and stuff like that. We might have acoustic guitar, something, you know, just to vibe out with. And um, get together and just discuss whatever topic uh, the, the presenter is going to bring that day, both in Long Island and uh, uh, out here in Brooklyn. For more information, go online. I really want to have fun with this Lent experience. I really want to have fun with this Lent experience. And then um, the other thing is... Please pray for CCC. We're looking to start doing a lot more and engaging a different group of individuals, especially our business men and women. Uh, I know that we have a lot of individuals say, I want to pour back into the ministry, but I don't want to usher. I, don't, I can't sing. You know, I'm like you, Pastor Jamar, I can't sing. But I have a gift. I have a skill. I have a, uh, but I want to pour back. So we, we're, we're working on this thing, and I want you to pray about it. It's called the boardroom. And in the boardroom is where we're going to bring all these different individuals in different arenas, and we're going to grab some youth and say, okay, do you want to be an entrepreneur? Let's talk about this. Well, whether you're going to get to real estate, accounting, you know, hair, makeup, wherever it is, and we want to start building a way. And, and um, so please pray for that. I know I got individuals. I got a call. Um, I got your number. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that. But the reason why we hesitate is because this, we don't want this to be for personal gain. All right, I'm not gaining anything from this. I don't want you to gain anything. It's really to say, okay, what can I do to pour back into the next generation, right? The part of, you know, uh, 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 that's why I appreciate Arnold Schwarzenegger because he has six rules, and number six was give back uh, and don't expect anything back. So we want to pour into these individuals. And my goal, if we can, is actually create an endowment where these individuals, we can actually launch them as they're vetted with the financial plan and finances in the bank to get started, right? Uh, so, so, and then in five years, we want them to give it back to the next group of individuals. So please pray for that because it's, it's an audacious dream, but I think we can do it together as a family, amen? amen. As we leave this place with never God's presence, Jesus is Lord, period. We believe it, we proclaim it, and we're seeing it come to pass. God bless and enjoy the rest of your week. Family, thank you so much for watching CCC's YouTube channel. If you feel what you just experienced impacted your life in any way, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this video with others so we can fulfill our mission in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. We welcome you to check out some of our other videos. Also, make sure to click the notification bell so you are the first to know when we post a new one.
Our praise and worship team brings us a powerful and dynamic live worship experience every Sunday. And trust me and Cameron when I say, you do not want to miss it. Streaming times are in the description box below. And if you are looking for any other information about what's happening here at CCC, visit www.cccinfo.org. We hope to see you next Sunday, but for now, continue to have a blessed week in the Lord.